Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% LA Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world, the five-time MLS Cup champion, LA Galaxy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Gessman. Joining me in studio tonight, Mr. Larry Morgan. Glad to be with you on Thursday, July 12th, as the LA Galaxy get ready to head all the way across the country. In fact, they were flying earlier today to take on the New England Revolution, the first of two back-to-back East Coast games, one against New England and one against the Philadelphia Union. The LA Galaxy obviously into the transfer window now as well. We're certainly going to talk a little bit about that and see how the LA Galaxy could possibly make some make some changes, everything else in that. And, uh, of course, the Galaxy's record. Are they as good as their last five unbeaten or their last eight? We're going to talk about that as well. So a bunch to get to, a bunch of things to talk about. And in order to do that, we have uh, one of my favorite people writing for uh, Corner of the Galaxy now. We're lucky to have him. Uh, no, it's not Robbie Keane that's behind you, Larry. It's Mr. Larry Morgan. Larry, thanks for stopping by, buddy. Hi, Josh. Thanks for having me in, in your corner. Always. Yeah. Always a pleasure. I was going to say, do you feel But a little- I'll tell you, he is many. That wall back he, there. he is. He's he's sort of staring at you and and you know grimacing angrily he's like he always life size. <laughs> that's what, that's what I said. Except that like he would only be about four feet tall. So it's only about a couple inches. Well, he shorter. wasn't very tall, so you know. No, he wasn't. He absolutely wasn't. So uh, we have a lot to talk about. Obviously, uh, the World Cup is still stealing some of the glory of Major League Soccer here. I don't know if we can say glory and Major League Soccer and World Cup all next to each other like that, Larry. But I mean, the Galaxy have. Uh, have been sort of out- outshadowed or outshined by the World Cup as w- as usually, which is what, which is what you want to see. I mean, yeah. you know, that's yeah, I understand. The, the The World Cup is something that they want to watch, it's something that they want to you know be a part of and, and watch it. But it's not part of their season right now. In mm-hmm. fact, it's behind them. So I mean, yes, there's guys like Michael Ciani and Roman Alessandrini who I'm sure are very interested in the game, um, but that's not going to stop. Uh, you know, the guys right now from, from having to play in the season and this game against, um, against New England is, is a super important game. So, I mean, you know, what do we say, Larry? I keep trying to say where this Galaxy team is, right? Where do they fit in the Western Conference? Um, you know, how can, we, how can we sort of measure the talent on this team? And it's tough to do because of who they've played and who they haven't played. Um, and they played a lot of really good teams, Atlanta and New York City. and In the West... That's really hard to say. They're one point out of a playoff spot right now. Uh, I think it's, even though we're one game past the halfway point, it's still a little bit early to determine that. Um, do I think they're a playoff team? Yes. If, I, if they make no changes at all, this was a contention that I made, that the Galaxy, if they have the exact same personnel, don't make any changes, no added defenders, they don't get rid of Giovanni Dos Santos as everybody wants, they keep Ramon Alessandrini, all these things that people are sort of going in and out of, if they keep it exactly the same, is this team a playoff team? Yes. Yeah, okay, so you and, and I are in the same page. Remember what I said at the start of the year, this team will not play its best soccer until the second half of the season. Yeah, it, it re, I, I get that, and it makes sense because— uh, But yes, I think it is a playoff team. All right, and if they can make some adjustments, if they can go out and get some players, they need defense. We know they need defense. Yeah. Um, now, can they win MLS Cup with this team? No. No. No, they, they're, no. they're not better than Atlanta. No. They're not better than FC Dallas. No. They're not better than Sporting Kansas City right now, no. although they've, they've slid a little bit. Um, Are they better than Seattle? Uh, yes, yes, they are. They are better than <laughs> they Seattle. Better than they're Seattle. better than Toronto. They're better than Toronto. They're Toronto. better. Wow, they're, Toronto. They're better than DC United and San Jose. Although the results don't necessarily prove that, they are yeah. better. Yeah. Um, but it is a playoff team, definitely. A championship team, no. No, and and they probably shouldn't be. You can you can almost look at the LA Galaxy and say that in 2009 they weren't an MLS Cup winning team. They got there. They but, should have won. But, they, but they're but they not an MLS Cup winning team. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's still a couple. Here's the thing. If they go into this offseason with exactly the same people that they have now, though, Larry, um, and they reset some things. Um, a year's looking, experience yeah, and playing? In a system. In a system. That we think they've established, by the yeah. way. They, we didn't know what their, what their system was until probably the last maybe four games, five yeah. games, yeah. which has shown in their unbeaten record that they have a system. Um, so with a three-five-two system that they seem cock-eyed to like, cockeyed three-five-two, a cock as as Siggy Schmidt would say, a cockeyed three-five-two, whatever that means. Just if you go into this off season, 
it's unbalanced because Chris Pontius doesn't come all the way back to play defense, yeah. and so he stays up. So it's uh, it, it is it's cockeyed. It's 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 stood a little. Um, so if you go through all of these things, you look at that. If the Galaxy go into the off season and they say have to replace three or four players instead of the fifteen players or. <laughs> On this team, which is very, very good. I mean, it's 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 uh, impressive, but that also, but that also can lead to a number of unhappy players. One of whom we'll be getting to, or we'll be, we'll be discussing quite shortly. Yeah. But that's a nice problem to have. It's it a nice luxury to have to have too many good players. It is. I mean, you're looking at. Uh, we were talking about before we started, like who was the most underrated player on the galaxy so far, and it might be. I brought up Ima Boatang because he has five assists. If he uh, could only finish. He has five, but he has five assists, which True. is I think ties him with Ashley Cole for the lead. So you have two guys with five assists. Ashley Cole starts every game. Ima Boatang can't find a game right now. Granted, he was hurt a little bit. Uh, he is really good as a super stub, and especially when the Galaxy are winning, he is so good at being a relief valve whenever they are winning and able to control the ball and just run into the corner and take the ball um, and, and be that kind of guy. So... I mean, you look at all those things and, and you're starting to feel pretty, I think, pretty confident about, you know, the depth that you have and all the people getting healthy. But Ima Boateng should be getting more minutes than he probably is with five assists. Sure. And I've always said among the things that impresses me about Boateng is he's one of the rare athletes I've covered. And I've covered a lot of athletes over the years in this business. He's one of the rare athletes who makes running fast look so easy. That's how you, that's how you know he's fast. Is whenever it doesn't look like he's really working that hard and he just blows right yes. by people. Um, no, I mean, yeah, it is. So, I mean, Boatang is one of those people. Uh, you know, Ramon Allison Trini. Granted, I think a lot of people are overreacting to him. Let's let's focus in on him. Sure. Um, I think there's a lot of fans, Larry, who are looking at Siggy Schmidt's comments and and stuff that you had uh, you had personally pulled from Siggy, where he said, um, you know, you might have to give in order to get. Basically, I think I'm paraphrasing with that. With the pretty transfer well. window, yeah, yes. with the transfer window, he said, you know, we might have to give in order to get. Um, I think that that means that guys like Joao Pedro and Michael Ciani might be going. Um, that's certainly, and I wouldn't be upset to see either one. <laughs> and, well, I mean, they're, they're worth a lot of money in terms of yes. what they do. I mean, the thing is, Joel Pedro's salary isn't that much, but his transfer fee is high. So that transfer fee is still a ton of money, um, that they end up paying all the time. Um, so that's, that's still an issue, but there's a, there's a part of that. There's a part, and it's, it's something that obviously I've said so many times on the podcast, Larry, that, you know, if you want to get something, you can't give just give bad things away. So you have to give something that you want. And so lots of people have theorized that with Siggy Schmidt saying, in order to get, we must give, uh, people have been pointing to Ramon Alessandrini. You're, you're talking about a guy who has been moody throughout the first part of the season. But, but it's, it's weird because every time I've talked to Ramon, he's been great with me. But I've heard from other people he's been very moody. But I have, I have not had that problem with him. Yeah. Um, he... I think that anytime he's talked to the media, I, I feel like he hasn't been too moody. Um, I think he's frustrated. I think he wants more playing time. Siggy Schmidt certainly not afraid to pull him in games in, in second halves whenever he thinks he's tired. And let's remember that last year there was growing concern from Galaxy fans and everybody else in between that Roman Alessandrini was running himself into the ground with all the games he was playing and the effort he was putting out there. And what, he had 13 goals? 13 goals, 12 assists. So 13 goals, 12 assists on the on the year. He was the Galaxy's real point of offense. Uh, everything went through him because, quite honestly, they didn't have too much more. Uh, but I will say this. For all the people who say that the offense isn't being run through him and that he's had to play a different role, and Siggy Schmidt certainly went out of his way to say that, hey, Roman was playing defense. That was He was happier about the defense than he was about the two goals, uh, that Roman is playing defense and playing a little bit different position. I'll tell you, I don't see a difference in his position from 2017 to 2018. He's still a right winger. He's still asked to get into the attack from the right wing or create an open space down the right wing. The difference for him is that he has... Zlatan Ibrahimovic and Ola Kamara who either finish balls off if he can get crosses in or open space for him to be able to cut inside and take shots. So I don't see the huge difference in, in the things. It's just that the ball is being spread around more, which is a good thing because the Galaxy were pretty The ball went through him last season. It did and it didn't, but yes, you're right, it did because yeah. he was the only one creating. He was the only one that had. He was the man last year. Now, let me ask you this. After seeing what he did against the crew, he came off the bench, played last 30 minutes, scored twice, was tremendous. Should he start or should he come off the bench? L looking at the boost he gave that team last game. I think he should start. I still think he's a starter. I do too. I do too. But would he... 
Would he benefit from coming off the bench? Would he benefit from coming off the bench? Would he accept it? That is a good question. He he may benefit from it, and certainly he was first to point out that the reason it was so easy for him to come in and score two goals is because the Galaxy were already winning 2-0. Yeah, he also uh, said he was unhappy about it, too, when he was yeah. given the news. Yeah, and, and I get that. And I would, yeah. quite honestly, I don't want a player to be happy to come off the bench. I want, you know, I don't think, Alan Gordon may have came See, off the he bench. he said he but, was highly motivated. I always like that. That's always, but I mean, here's the here's the problem: is that if you're of the belief that the Galaxy could move Ramon Alessandrini in order to get a defensive piece, um, which I think is a little bit of a stretch. I don't I don't love that sort of idea, and I don't know. You know, somebody said if you trade Ramon Alessandrini, you know, you're gonna alienate all the fans and everything's gonna go. And I'm like, okay, I get it, but it all depends on what they get for him. Of whether or not I think it's a decent deal or a good deal or anything yeah. else in between. Because it's like, so so you wouldn't trade Roman Alessandrini for anybody? I wouldn't trade him for anybody. Okay, so, you know, Leo Messi wants to come to the Galaxy. You wouldn't trade Roman Alessandrini off the team for that? It's like, oh, no, no, I mean, it would be for him. I, granted, we're not, it's not that impactful of a player. Uh, you're probably looking for defense. And as I said on Monday, my conversations with uh, with a, a Galaxy source says, uh, basically, the Galaxy are focusing on defense. And that's really probably their one spot they're focusing on. That may be it. Um, but well, remember how we were joking after the uh, DC United game. We're talking about the defense, and we're sitting there going, "Jeff Siggy, how much do you want? Yeah. When can you get here?" Yeah, Jeff Cameron. Speaking of Jeff Cameron and the rumors surrounding that, um, I will tell you, I reached out to a- another Galaxy source and asked him, uh, basically, would I, would am I crazy to think that Roman Alessandrini is is not safe on this roster? Um, I was told basically not crazy, I, that, that, that I'm not crazy, which is always good to hear, uh, quite honestly. Um, I think that and prob- I dispute that. Yeah, I was, gonna, I was going to say the there's way. probably a bunch of people who dispute that. Um, so, so looking at that, I sort of sit there and say, okay, um, you know, what is... Firstly, J- I hope he doesn't go. I hope he doesn't. I hope he stays. The Galaxy are very aware that if they want something... But he's one of their best trade assets yeah, I mean, if it comes to that. I mean, look, who, you're not going to trade Ola Kamara. No. You're not trading Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Uh, you can't trade Giovanni Dos Santos. I know everybody's like, trade Gio, trade... You can't trade him. He's he's untradeable. Not with that contract. Not with that contract. And it seems like they offered him to uh, Liga MX teams, apparently, and, and they were both like, no, no I gracias. I hope they don't trade Jonathan either. Yeah, I, I don't think that they're... Go- I don't think either of no. them are no. going no. anywhere. Um, it feels to me that, that these two will end the ge- end the season with the Galaxy, at least, and probably through next season, too, because that's how the contracts run. Um, so unless Gio wants to try to go somewhere before the contract is over, knowing the Galaxy aren't going to renew it. So, I mean, that's always a possibility. Uh, I would say that, you know, where else are your tradable pieces? Do you want to trade... Maybe you could get some money for Brad for Jameson, but you're not going to get a high-caliber player. No. And and it doesn't do much cap space relief. That doesn't help you because he's a homegrown player, so that doesn't make any sense. And you can't... I mean, you can't trade Shelvick, not with that big contract either. Shelvick's not going anywhere. You're not trading Siani. He's untradeable. Ashley Cole, he's 37, going to be 38, he's, so he, he can't trade he him. can't trade Ashley Cole. Dave Romney, you could move. You could move Dave. I hope they don't because I think he's really starting to find his groove at right back. But, yeah, you could move him. Would he bring a high-quality piece? Depends. So, again, I mean, you go down the road. Could, could you move Chris Pontius? That's unlikely at his unlikely, age. Yeah, unlikely. Perry, uh, Perry Kitchen? No, you just brought him in. You're not moving Perry yeah, Kitchen. I mean, that, yeah. that one stays. That one, I think, is, is one of those untradables. How about Leggett? No. You could. You could, but you, I wouldn't. But you could. Here's the thing. If you really can he stay healthy, you can know? he stay healthy? Can he stay healthy? And how impactful has he been in the last? Granted, he was injured the year before, and then he's just coming back, and he's sort of still trying to feel his way through this stuff. Yeah. Uh, I saw him on Saturday night, and he was still limping pretty heavily. Um, so it doesn't. He's seem- almost fragile. He he has gotten that way all of a sudden. Yeah. Uh, although he had some problems with that at West Ham, but mostly with with illness and not necessarily yeah. um, injury. Um, so you look at all these things, but I mean, the tradable assets you have are Boateng. Yeah. But, but not not very to, limited, yeah, very, not, very, not to, very limited value, not to a super high degree. Um, so I mean, you have on one hand about three or four players that you might be able to get value for, and Roman Alessandrini is probably the highest. Yeah. So if you're going to now, here's the problem: if they do trade and and got Roman Alessandrini out, um, and transferred him somewhere, uh, if the Galaxy did that and they brought in Jeff Cameron as a designated player, I'm not sure how I feel about having a defensive designated player. Uh, the Galaxy just increasing the amount of money they're spending on on the. Uh, on the defense, but really it's the designated player spot that worries me more than anything. Now, granted, 
You have Zlatan Ibrahimovic, who is a non-DP, so it's almost like you have a designated player with him. So, I mean, you don't lose that much, but you have to you have to think the opportunity cost of that designated player role, Larry, is is so high because it's not the money that costs; it's the actual spot that's worth. It's it's priceless. You 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 want to spend it on somebody who costs you as much money as possible. Um, so, seeing that and looking at that. I almost wonder, you know, how the Galaxy try to spin this, and if that defense uh, is that important this year. Is it is it that important this year, Larry, to overspend on Jeff Cameron, have him for the next two years as a designated player? I think, you know, speaking of the, of the defense, I think we're going to get a, a much better read of this defense in these next two road games. We're going to get a much better read, and then we'll find out how serious they are about bringing somebody in on that back line. Yeah, I mean, I mean two, I mean two tough places to play, long road trips. Um, this I think would be a, will be a real challenge. You have to remember this defense, Larry, is is little Jekyll and Hyde. Yes, it they is. They have six shutouts on the year. They're not horrible. No. They have six shutouts on the year. No. Now that's out of eighteen. But they're games, not that good either. A third of their games have been shutouts. That's not again. That's cr- that's actually a pretty good stat. Yeah. Um, but I I don't feel like the, it doesn't feel like they're a great. But when you think unit. about some of the goals they've allowed to let certain wins g- turn into either draws or losses, right? Especially DC United and San Jose, those type of things just stick in the craw. They really do. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, the chat room saying pay someone to take Siani. Uh, I, I think if Siani goes, <laughs> it's not that easy. Yeah, I wish I, people were saying the same thing about Geo. I mean, with a six million dollar contract. You would need to pick up if you're the Galaxy, and it might be worth it. But I don't know how you how you sell this, Larry. But you would need to sell. You would need to pick up about three and a half or four million dollars of that contract in order to move him right now. And if that is that what you want to do, um, I think they can afford it. Y- y- <laughs> we know <laughs> they I can't can afford, afford it. it. I'm sure you can, but uh, I we, think they can yeah, afford it. we know they can afford it. I mean, that's never <laughs> been the question about to, AG. But do they want to? But do they want to eat the money? Um, yeah. And I just don't see it. I don't feel like there is that sort of movement or that sort of free will within the front office organization to be like, oh yeah, we're, we're, we're go-getters. We're going to go out. I just, it doesn't feel that way. I think the Galaxy are focused on defense. I still think Jeff Cameron is an option. I still think that moving Roman Alessandrini seems like far-fetched. Um, it's just, it's, it's one of those things. I, I'm, I'm waiting for the Galaxy to figure themselves out. And this game against New England could, could very well be that game. Now, we talked about Rolf Felcher a little bit, and you actually were out at training. If you haven't gone to uh, cornerofthegalaxy.com and read Larry's notebook, his notables, as, as we say. And uh, quotables. Yeah, yeah, his notables, quotables, and his notebook. Uh, please check it out um, because it, it has a little insight into Rolf Felcher. You got to talk to him. What did he say about his injury? Mr. Pectoral Muscle um, torn right, there. Torn right pectoral muscle. He has a return date in mind. He didn't. He he politely refused to say what it was, but he, he did admit it is soon. Uh, doctors originally told him four months, and he is confident he can come back sooner than that. Uh, Coach Schmitz told me he knows what the return date is, also wouldn't tell me what that was, and he says Felcher has a real good chance of achieving that date, whatever that is, but let's put it, but it is soon, quote, unquote, soon. Um, if you had to put money on it, where would you put it? In I'd say you give another two weeks. Yeah, and and I think that might be it. So I mean, you're looking at a possible uh, LAFC game that Thursday game Boy, after Philadelphia. That that's can't gonna be that's gonna be a great one. Away to LAFC uh, again. We talked about sort of the next four games being difficult. Uh, that includes the Orlando game at home at the mm-hmm. end of the month. Um, mm-hmm. Granted, Orlando's going through a coaching change and they've sort of mm-hmm. dropped off and struggled, but it's still gonna, not going to be an easy game. You know, and uh, uh, one more thing about Felcher. I talked to him after uh, he, he walked off the training pitch a little bit er- earlier and I asked him what the biggest challenge was in his recovery and he said his fitness and hearing him huff and puff, he's still a little ways away. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's able to run. Like the, he, Yes, he, he can just, run. He just yes. can't do anything with the pec and I think they're right. just trying to although, really... although doctors have told him his range of motion is better than what they expected. Ah. I'm sure. I'm sure, Mister. I like to do everything with my shirt off. What is is always flexing that muscle. Better him than me. That is uh, always good. Um, they're talking about uh, in the chat room as well. David says, uh, "Does Baggio Husidic have any trade value?" No. 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 I, but he's I, a good depth guy. But no, no trade value. He is. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, that's the uh, LA native in the chat room says, "Get rid of Gio by giving Jonah too, so you can give him Jonah for free. Um, no, no transfer. No transfer. But you have to get. I mean." 
it opens up two If I had to choose between Geo and Jonah, well, Jonah. That's not that's not a you're not know, a walking if somebody said if True. I had to choose between the two, I'd take Geo, that's the, that's the controversial position. I don't know anybody who said that. Um, yeah, they're also saying uh, they're drawing teams uh, that we should have pummeled. They're beating teams they should lose to. They're losing to teams they should beat. Welcome to the 2018 LA Galaxy. They're, they're, <laughs> and then they are an enigma. They're difficult to figure out. I mean, you know, part of our job, Larry, is sort of to look at these games beforehand and figure out what we think is actually going to happen in these games, what we think the results are. And I'll tell you, I get them wrong, especially with this team, all the time. Well, I mean, they beat a very good Columbus, Columbus crew team yeah. for nothing, and yet they tie two of the worst teams in the league, DC United and San Jose, and each time they squandered two goal leads. Yeah. If that's not a Jekyll and Hyde team, I don't know what is. If you can iron those out, uh, though. Or, or as you call them, an enigma. That's the perfect word. Yeah, well, it's an overused word, yeah. quite honestly. But, but it's it, applicable. It is. Because um, yeah, I don't know where they sit a, a bunch in this whole thing. So um, anyway, it, it'll be interesting to see how, how the Galaxy sort of go out. But speaking of the Dos Santos, as they come back, they fit into this lineup almost seamlessly. They played very well against the crew. I, I think one of their best performances of, of the season, and the first time they have won with them both on the field since the season opener. Yeah, that is a crazy stat. Um, it doesn't surprise me, by the way, um, but it is a crazy stat. Uh, but they both play. Here's the difference: when they were playing beforehand, they weren't playing in the positions they that they should be playing in, and, and the Galaxy were playing a bunch of people out of. They position. were testing certain combinations. They really were, and they weren't working out. Or not very well. Yeah, and, and so when you look at that and how it sort of fits together now, um, I would say that Gio is in as much of the perfect spot for him as can possibly be. He is an offensive player. He's sitting underneath two strikers. He's able to get into the attack and go forward, and if he wants to, he can dip his toe into defense. But if not, they have enough players coming back on but defense. But which toe is a Big toe or little toe? Little Probably, toe. Yeah. Little toe for yeah. him. He, does, he yeah. always leads with the little toe, which is hard to do. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, you look at it that way, and it, it just it makes a little more sense that they're playing. And Jonathan Dos Santos being primarily a defensive player, but still able to get forward and get into the attack and link play, and you saw some really good passing. I think Jonathan was in there with, uh, with Ashley Cole sometimes, and Ashley Cole overlapping. And the freedom they've given Ashley Cole. I mean, Siggy Schmidt has given freedom to players who who benefit from that freedom. Zlatan Ibrahimovic has freedom. Uh, Ashley Cole has freedom. I would say that to a certain extent, Jonathan Dos Santos has freedom. Gio pretty much has to stay where they want him to stay. But Jonathan's able to roam up and come back. Um, so you're seeing that Chris Pontius doesn't have freedom. Everybody thinks he does, but he is he's asked to play that right hand at that right sided line. And he has a goal owner assist in his last six matches. The streak continues. Does he get seven in New England? Can he possibly I get a goal owner assist I think he in can. New sure. England? Sure. Um, so no, I mean just little stories like that. But I feel like the Dos Santos brothers, for the way that they came back and the positions that Siggy Schmidt has put him in, is really the best of all worlds. Now here's a you know, one question I yeah. would have loved to have, to have asked either either one of them, but unfortunately they weren't made available, is what did they learn from their World Cup experience? How to sit on the bench? That, that, that they could apply to this LA Galaxy team. I don't know. <sighs> I would have loved to ask them, but... They, they're never... Yeah, they're yeah. No, they don't make yeah. them available but, usually. But back to them, though. I mean, that was... I was as impressed with them in that game as I have been in a long time. A long time. Again, and it, it was about time. It just fits. I mean, Gio got probably got unlucky not fit. to have an assist or a goal in that game. Yeah. Um, he was he was pretty active there. It's, I made this statement. That was the Galaxy's most complete performance of 2018. And no somebody doubt. goes, no it doubt. was only a complete performance in the second half. And I go, I go, no doubt. even if that's true, even if you just believe it was the second half, by the way, the Galaxy had a bunch of chances in the first half that they didn't convert on until that the the goal at the end there um, with Ola Kamara scoring right at the end of the first half. Um even if you give them that, even if you say that they didn't play a great first half, it's still their most complete performance of the year because they haven't had that sort of sustained attack through 45 minutes in the second half of really any game. And you could point to Real Salt Lake being a second half team, but that was even less of the total 45 in the second half. The, it was by far their most complete game. Against a very good team. Yeah, and, and People G tend to forget that. G the crew's a very good team. And you know Giassi Zardes was pumped up for that game, and they kept him at bay. Was the, ball was the ball over the goal line? I don't know. It was hard to say. It. I, they every, were, time I, every time I see the uh, replay, yikes, you can't really tell, but... 
Is is that clear and obvious? I mean, yeah. I hate to go back to VAR and stuff like that because I thought it was out whenever it first whenever it was played live. Like whenever I was watching yeah. the field, I'm like, that looked like it may have gone out, and then it bounces off Dave Romney and goes into the goal, and I was like, oh, that's good. That's a, that's a tough. Break. And I'm pretty sure we heard Dave heave a sigh of relief up in the press box after that play. D- Dave Romney is now <laughs> the uh, the league's number one advocate for uh, for VAR. That is for sure. Um, it certainly seems that way. But I mean, so Josh said the ball goes in. You know, it was it it. it Looks like it may have gone over the line, but they they called it. But was it clear and obvious? It's not clear and obvious to me. It was not. Unless they had another angle, we didn't see. And certainly the Zlatan penalty kick, people are still asking where the foul was. I think there was contact there. It looked like... He got hit under the chin. It looked like Abu Bakar, whatever his name Uh is, hit him right in the chin. Yeah, very well could have. And they had a running battle all night. They did. And Zlatan won that battle. Let's let's not Let's not do that. Uh, So, no, it's, it's a good thing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, again, I think the Dos Santos brothers fit in well. I think they'll fit in well in New England. Now, the big question, before we even look at New England... I don't think we're going to see many, if any, changes on the Galaxy f- for the New England match. I think there will be. Think, I think, there, think will there will be, be at least one. At least one? At least one. Who? I don't know that Zlatan Ibrahimovic is going to start. True. And I, if that happens... He did miss one day of training this week, although he was out there yesterday. I don't know about today. I think he's fine in terms of health. I just think that they're going to yeah. be very, very hesitant to put him on the turf at, uh, against New England. They were. Will they bring him off the bench? They did in Portland, right? They, they played Portland. him about... Yes. Excuse me. They drew, yes. got him about 18 minutes in Portland, I think, yeah. um, which was fine. And then I think that was the 1-1 game that they ended yes. up drawing. So it yes. worked. Um, but yeah, I mean, that is... That, that's that's one of the things, and and they're asking in the chat room. They're like, we need a stat from Josh. What are the number of VA call, VAR calls for and against us for the season? We asked the Galaxy that question. We asked if there was anybody keeping track of that for per team because they do it league wide overall. Like, no, but they don't do it per team, and so I want I want to see it too. I wonder if those same fans are aware of the fact that that penalty that was awarded to the Galaxy was the first one the Galaxy have gotten in their favor this season. Uh, it's crazy. Um, I was talking to Christian but that, Miles. But that's, but that's a very good question about the VAR. You were, you were with me whenever Christian Miles told us that stat before the game. He was like, hey, did you know it's uh, the Galaxy and Seattle were the only two teams that hadn't had a penalty called for them? I'm like, really? That's crazy. And then Zlatan goes in and, and does it. Um, that is crazy. Um, so it, Almost unfair. It, you know, it, is, it does. And for people who say all oh, these things even out, sometimes they don't even out, yeah. which is you know, also part of the law of averages. And how many goals have, have the Galaxy had disallowed this season? We were talking, uh, it was a lot. It's five or six it's or five seven. Or six. Yeah. I mean, even in the game, even in the game, I think against, uh, was it DC United, where Ola Kamara maybe had two that were called? Yeah, called off- offside. Yeah. His bogus offside calls, yes. Yeah. Yeah, the Galaxy haven't exactly been. Oh, wait, no, it was Kamara and Pontius. Um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Um, no, so you look at all those, and yeah, I mean, it's one of those, it's, hey, it's one of those crazy things. Uh, let's go through. Um, a little bit. Oh, I wanted to say this. I wanted to pull this out because I was tweeting about this. I had a stats thread that I tweeted out. I asked if I, you if should I, see the stats threads this guy comes up with. I mean, it is amazing. Yeah, except I can't spell. What did I not spell? Position. Positioning. Yeah, positioning. I'll get that right. <laughs> I went to Arizona State. Right. We it's don't. Right. We don't spell there. That's not how we get how it works. But it is amazing the stuff he comes up with. I just I I look at these charts and graphs and I ask myself, where does he get the time to do this? Uh, my wife. Talk about dedication. My wife is uh, is very nice. Here's the stats that I wanted to bring to you. Uh, it's for the goals conceded, and certainly we've been on the case of the Galaxy in terms of how many goals they've conceded. Uh, at the midway point, it was 28, so that's 56 if you if you double it throughout the thing. And 56 goals would be a ton of goals to give up. In fact, it might be the third highest as I'm looking. Yeah. The third highest ever in Galaxy history. But remember how many they allowed last season. 67. 67. So second would, only to Minnesota United. It, so it would. But it seems like the Galaxy have been diminishing in terms of the amount of goals they've been. Like, yes, they allowed five goals over those two draws that they had. But for the most part, the goals being scored against them have dropped considerably since the start of the season and everything else. Uh, here's the thing. The Galaxy so far through 18 games have conceded 28 goals. Uh, in 2010 and 2011, those Galaxy teams, the very, very good teams. both of those teams were Especially 2011. 2010 was really good, too. You have to remember how good 2010 that, that fell in the playoffs to FC Dallas and shouldn't have fallen in the playoffs. That they were the best team that year. Um, but 2010, 2011, the total number of goals conceded in that season, in 2010, 26 goals. So that's two goals less than the Galaxy have already conceded. All right. Um, the other thing is 28. 
is 28 is the number they allowed in 2011. So that is the same number of goals the Galaxy have conceded halfway through the season plus one game in 2018. To give you an idea of where it is, but as Larry rightfully pointed out, 67 goals allowed last season, 39 in 2016. All right, 46 in 2015, just to sort of give you an idea, 37 and 38 in 2014, 2013, respectively. So uh, the Galaxy are going to have to get on a, on some shutouts if they're going to if they're going to try to keep this. Uh, a, a are sort they of, capable of doing that? I don't know. Here, I'll get. Here's a good question for you: the Galaxy's overall average since the beginning of the of the franchise all the way to right now, the average number of goals they've conceded in a season is 40.2. Uh, will they get more or less than 40.2? They're at 28 wow. right now. Wow. That's a very good question. Uh, I think they're going to allow more than that. I think so, too. Yeah. I, I don't know that it's a ton more. Yeah. But it's probably 45, which is would put them on par with like 2005, uh, which had a lot less games. <laughs> so you start getting into the, the amount of games that they played, and you have to look at actually goals conceded per game in order to really figure it out. But yeah. Will they allow more or less than 50? Ooh, that's probably that's probably a push, right? Yeah, 50 is probably a push. push. I think it's a push. Um, it's hard to say. As you said, you know, not too long ago, this, this is a Jekyll and Hyde team. I mean, for every four nothing win they'll have over the crew, they'll look pathetic in other matches. Here, let's just the way this team is. Let's flip the script now. Goal, okay. goal scored. Goal scored for the Galaxy in two thousand nine. Oh, let's give me. I'll give you what it's at right now. In two thousand eighteen, so far through eighteen games, they've scored thirty one goals. All right. 31 goals. Not horrible. Not 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 horrible at all. I think that's put some... That's a little bit more than a goal and a half, half a game. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Okay? Here is what the stat was in 2009. In 2009, a team that went to MLS Cup all the way through the playoffs, a rebuilding year under Bruce Arena, and he got it right, and he ran that team all the way. They ended up losing on penalty kicks to Real Salt Lake. You and I were both at that game. In the regular season in 2009, they scored 36 goals. Only five more goals the Galaxy scored in 2018, and they will have surpassed that number in the 2009 team. Now, you want to look at the 2011 winning side, the MLS Cup winning side, 48 goals. But remember, that defense was ridiculous. It's the goal it differential was. there that you were looking at. Yeah. 2012 MLS Cup winning side, 59 goals. They won't get 59 this season. 2014 MLS Cup winning side. 69. No way will they get that many. 69 goals. The most wow. the most goals scored in a season by the LA Galaxy. Do you have any idea? I'll say it's early. It was early in the franchise. Do you have any well, idea? Well, I, I, I can see the I can see through through, through the papers. So it's got to be 1998. That is that is correct. <laughs> good, good job. Good job reading through I the know, paper, Larry. Um, I'll say they scored. 72 goals? 85, 85 goals. 85 goals? In less games. Wow. I would like to point out. Is that the games. Zambrano team? No. I, you, my Galaxy history past that point I don't know. is, I not, can't is remember not great. Exactly. There are people who are screaming and shouting right now. I'm not one of those people who understands okay. exactly where they are. Uh, this team, by the way, currently better in points after uh, 18 games than the 2012 team. Um, which puts them in some serious company. And I would like to point out the designated players have now inched above 44% in, ter in terms of the total minutes that they have played. Well done. Yeah. People are screaming, 98 team, 98 team. <laughs> I, I love the delay on this because it allows like people to answer stuff that was happened about a couple minutes ago. So, um, no, they, this Galaxy team has been, has been okay um, this year. And that's sort of where I want to, I sort of want to tell everybody, this is not a horrible team. The eye test alone tells you this galaxy team is, is pretty good actually. Um, in terms of what they are and the Western conference, isn't good, Larry. No. So there's a chance for this team to be in the playoffs. We've already talked about that. I, yeah. I think it is a playoff team. Is it a championship contending team? Probably not. Uh, the, Probably not. the LA galaxy have a positive goal differential, and they're saying, yes, it was Zambrano's team. Um, okay. Uh, it, the Galaxy have a positive goal differential for the first time this season since they beat LAFC 4-3 to three in that famous, famous game. Can't they, wait for that rematch. They're currently plus three in goal differential. Uh, here is where their goal differential sits in the league. It's 10th in the league. He keeps coming up with these graphics. It's, it's just, it boggles Every, my mind. Everybody who's watching on the, yeah, on the show, I have, I have lots of these. It's incredible the stuff he has uh, at his disposal, tenth, but, but I am impressed. 10th in the league in goal differential. That's not horrible. In fact, no? it's better than Better than 50% because it's 20, there's 23 teams. Um, so, yeah, it, it's better than that. Uh, they're seventh in the league in goals for. The offense is good. We've said that no many times. No question about the offense. The defense, though, is very middle of the pack. It's 12th in goals against. That's it. But 12th, it's not. 
as bad as the defense has been, which I agree they have been not good, they're not that bad. No. But you get the impression that they are that bad. But when you look at at the facts, they're not that bad. Here, here we go. This is, this but, is but it's just that cer- certain game just stand out, just leave you shaking your head. The uh, Football Galaxy in the chat room says, the defense ne- uh, the, uh, they said the Galaxy need to be more than okay if they want to make it to the playoffs. Actually, I think okay gets them into the playoffs. It gets them in at sixth. Um, I don't think it's it's great, but it gets them in at sixth. I think that they will. I think this team, if you just left it alone, will get better. Um, I've said gonna, before they'll play their best in the second half of the season, and never, never doubt my observations. Yeah, of course, yeah, Larry tells me <laughs> that all the time. He's usually right, by the way, which is really, really the annoying part. Uh, the LA Galaxy facing off against the New England Revolution. Uh, that is the uh, the big game this weekend. Of course, uh, it's a 7:30 p.m. Eastern time start, so that is a 4:30 p.m. Uh, uh, West Coast start. Uh, the Galaxy will travel and have traveled there on Thursday. So if you're listening to this on Friday, they're already there. They're going to train in New England on Friday. They will play on Saturday and travel back on Sunday. All right, good. I'm glad we got all that. Uh, New England. The last time these teams have played each other, uh, in fact, the last game was July 22nd. So almost a month or almost a year ago. Uh, July 22nd, 2017, it was in New England, so they doubled up on going to New England, which actually they've done that a couple times because it's supposed to be Eastern Conference. You're supposed to flip-flop back and forth uh, between – because you only play them once, so you'll play you know New England there, and then you play New England here. It's supposed to flip back. It hasn't. It didn't flip-flop this year. So the Galaxy play in New England, which, of course, New England is a much better team this year, so you would have hoped that you got them at home this year, but you didn't. Uh, July 22nd, it was a loss, 4-3. to three. I don't remember if everybody remembers that game. I think that was an ugly game. I, I think, vaguely remember it being kind of ugly. I think Jermaine Jones got red carded in that game. I think if Ooh, I remember you could correctly, be right. yeah, yeah, you could be right. Um, so a four Bless three his loss, <laughs> a four three loss to uh, to for the LA Galaxy in New England. Uh, you have to go back to May thirty first, two thousand fifteen, uh, when the last time they played in New England and got a point. Um, so that was a two two draw. So the Galaxy have scored goals in New England. They haven't. They've gotten one point out of the last two games. Um, but otherwise, the Galaxy have actually been pretty successful, and they did, inc- of course, include MLS Cup on this graphic that I'm looking at. December seventh, twenty fourteen, a two one victory by the LA Galaxy over New England. Okay, let's put you on the spot. Will the Galaxy win this weekend? No, I don't think so either. It's a long trip. Can they get a point? I think yes. they can. They Will can they? Get I'm not sure. I'll tell you right now. If you tell me right now, Larry, you can get two points out of the next two games and you don't have to play, would you take the two points? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Okay. Um, because the next three games are ridiculously hard. Uh, you can say whatever you want about LAFC and how that game's going to go, but it's a short week for them already. They're going to play on Saturday in Philadelphia. They will play on Thursday at LA. So they are coming home. It's technically an away game. It's at Bank of California Stadium. That's a ridiculously difficult. And then they play that Sunday against Orlando. Who puts... Who puts- these schedules I don't know. together, these timelines. I don't know. It's just, at least, just, like, just not too recently, it was San Jose on what, Wednesday? Yeah. DC United on... On, on a Saturday? Saturday. Yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. It is, and it, and it has been that way, and this is, this is something we've harped on many times over the, uh, over the course of the years that, you know, especially, you have to understand what MLS did, is they took off time, and now they have to make up that time by sh- cramming games together. But then you don't play that game on a Thursday, after you send a team back-to-back weeks to the East Coast, you don't play a Thursday game. You play another Saturday game at home. You let them have a home game. You can, it, it's the, the unbalance, and I think Kevin pointed this out, but if you go places like in the Premier League um, and, you, and you look at how they play Granite, everything is so much closer together, Larry. Somebody I get in it. the MLS office is not a Galaxy fan. But a lot of times you'll, schedules. in the EPL, they go home, they go away, they go mm-hmm. home, they go away, they go home, they go, and they alternate back and forth, and that's how they end. So it's very even as it goes. Um, it's not even here, and the Galaxy st- will struggle on this. This is a tough, tough road trip. It is. Philadelphia is not bad. Uh, New England is not bad. Uh, we talked about it. New England uh, currently sitting in the fifth place right now. Uh, seven, four, and seven. Uh, they have 28 points, so just three points more than the Galaxy. And if you look at the stats and everything that's sort of... it's They're very similar teams in terms of it. The only difference, of course, being that New England plays in the Eastern Conference, which is a more difficult conference, and the Galaxy play in the Western Conference, which is easier. You would expect that New England is the better team here. But they're only separated by three points. Um, they're separated by... You know, 1.56 points per game to 1.39 points per game. Uh, the would, goal- you, would you be surprised if the Galaxy won this weekend? No. 
I wouldn't either. They can't surprise me either way. They could go out and get blown out. I wouldn't be surprised. They no. could win. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, because I, you don't know what to expect from week to week. And Jekyll and Hyde again. Yep, exactly right. The consistency in the performance comes from their ability to get points on the road in a tough environment. That's really what you want to see. You want to see them earn a point and make it a... Like in Montreal when they won that game, a game that, frankly, they... Didn't have much of a chance going into that game. No, because the travel was so far. And this is just as far. And then they're going to have to do it again against Philadelphia. Uh, Philadelphia currently sitting 7th in the Eastern Conference. Um, so they're not bad either. 7, 9, and 3. 19 games played. So a, a game more than the Galaxy right now. Um, all of these things are, are sort of leading up to the fact that the Galaxy are going to have to struggle through these, the rest of this month. Uh, I don't see an easy game. The Orlando game at home would be easy, except it's a short week. You will have just played your rival, and you will have just been traveled back and forth the week before, back and forth to the East Coast. At least you don't have to travel to Orlando. Yes. <laughs> Bless their heart. That Bless is, the MLS heart. Gee, it wasn't that nice of them to, to do that for, uh, for the Galaxy. Um, so, I mean, that's what you see. And, and we've talked about this New England team under Brad Friedel, who I did not think was going to be a good coach for them. Uh, and I've been told by everybody that that was a stupid thing to think. <laughs> they, they told me that he really does have things locked down, and he's got these guys playing. You think stupid things? No. All the time. No. Everybody knows. They listen. Um, but, I mean, you know, you have, you have Bunbury and Kellen Rowe and Fagundes um, and Pania. There, there's some really good attacking options here. Um, now, I wouldn't say that they exactly showcased that when Seattle came into town, because if you look, watch that Seattle game, uh, their last game was, was last weekend against Seattle at home. Uh, at New England, uh, it was a 0-0 draw of which each goalkeeper was tasked with making one save each. <laughs> Barn burner there uh, for Seattle. A, gr- a good point for Seattle, um, but it certainly wasn't, I think, the performance that New England thought that they were going to get out of things. So New England has a point to prove here, um, and they have the firepower to be able to embarrass the Galaxy. I mean, they really do. Yeah, let's hope it doesn't happen. But again, you don't know this team. You don't know the, with this Galaxy team. Yeah, it will. Uh, really don't. It will be. Inter- I'm. I'm now. I'm very interested to see how. Uh, how all of this. I is think they go. can win. Will they win? Probably not. But I think they can win. Of course they can. It's at, first of all, if, it's major if league they soccer. play like they did against Columbus, they'll win. Now, does Zlatan? I mean, wh- Zlatan probably doesn't start in this game, which means Roman Alessandrini probably does start up top with Ola. No, I wouldn't. No. Well, you could. You could. You could. Listen, if you the could. Galaxy are trying to play a system, Larry, right? A 3-5-2, if, we're, if we agree that that is the system they're trying to play, then playing Roman up with Ola Kamara is not a horrible idea, except that you, Roman doesn't really play similarly as, as Laton. But you could go back to a 4-5-1, which they're very comfortable in, although then you have to find a place for Geo again. So, I mean, it is, in, it is interesting to see. I would almost think that after the, the runouts that Chris Pontius has had, that he would be the one getting the rest this time. Um, and if he's resting, then Roman Alessandrini can take up that right-hand side, um, and then Pontius can come on in the second half for Roman Alessandrini. I think that's Paul. Call, call Siggy and make that, uh, you know, offer that, yeah. that plan well, or well, that strategy. Well, you and I were talking beforehand. We believe that the Galaxy will probably stick with the same back line, though. We, yes. We don't think they're going to mess with if it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Hey, do, you, do you... Are you okay with the Galaxy not putting Zlatan Ibrahimovic in there? Or are they at a point that's so critical in the season, should he be playing any game he can, and you sort of just have to take the risk factor? I mean, the studies... They're, they're I think he should be playing. If, if it's up to me, I think he should be. I don't know what But I can see an argument as to why you bring him off, off the bench. Um, I just think after the, the troubles they've had earlier in, in the season... You know, they're starting to, to right the ship, and let's, let's keep this going until it starts sinking again. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But again, there are good arguments each way. Um, I would start them, but... I don't blame them for not. Yeah. I understand, and, and... I can agree with that, too. And I don't know how much of his input this is. Um, I know he missed one day of training... This week, I don't know he, if he, that was just arrest him or pose missed, for pictures, which he did, you know, down below. Oh, you saw, you saw, did you see? I saw the picture. Did you see the picture of with him on you, roller with, skates? With, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, him on roller skates with an ice cream cone taking and, a picture? And there was another one he he posed for a picture with a former SC receiver. Ju- Juju Smith, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 And he said, Yeah, time to do that. So, I never you know. thought I'd uh, I th- I'd meet God. That yeah, was that one. Um, yeah. No, there was a kid. I who, saw the roller blades. Yeah, yeah. There was a kid who came from Sweden. Um, was there to go to a Galaxy game to see Zlatan play. He wanted to see Zlatan play, and then he runs into Zlatan on the street. Can you imagine the odds of that? 
I, it's crazy. It, it is. is. And Zlatan's wearing... But did that make that kid's day or not? But can we talk... Wow. Just Let's focus in on Zlatan just for a second. He's wearing old school roller skates in this. These aren't rollerblades. Somebody said, oh, he's rollerblading. No, 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 no. He's roller skating. Because Zlatan is old school and can make roller skates hip and fashionable again. And not only was he skating... But in the picture, he had an ice cream cone, which means he was skating while eating an ice cream cone. And that, my friends, is God's status, and it's the reason why Zlatan Ibrahimovic is in Los Angeles you, right now. you got to love the stuff that this guy does. Did he get the ice cream cone from like, Ikea? That's the only thing. Did he go to Ikea? Did he rollerblade to, or roller skate to Ikea to get the ice cream cone? Because that, that's another level altogether. I don't, I don't know. No, it's great. I mean, everybody has picked up that picture with the kid from Sweden, yeah. um, and it's well-deserved. And he is... Larry, you and I, I don't know about you, I was very weary of how he would be with the press and how he would interact with us, and he has been nothing but a gentleman. When you get access to him. Yeah. And the access to him is very limited. Uh, I was hoping to talk to him yesterday for, for my notebook. They didn't make him available, but you're right. But when he is, has, when he has been made available, he's very talkative, very quotable, but you only get certain, you have to pick your spots with him. You do. You do, but whenever but he talks to us, he's been very good. He's been very nice, very quotable. He is, and you can see him smiling whenever he comes up with all this stuff. He's, he is, he is great. And anybody you talk to uh, inside the Galaxy locker room will tell you what a great uh, guy he is off the field. The only time he seems like he's tired of answering questions is when a certain Hispanic reporter asks him for his thoughts on the Dos Santos on the brothers. Santos brothers yes. he, Zlatan just shakes his head and just. I think at one point he said, he said, don't you have a question for me? He goes, isn't there any questions about me? It was, it was funny. He, yeah. he does play off that. But no, I mean, all these things really interesting in terms of, you know, the, the chemistry. So I, I don't, I would love for Zlatan to play this game. I would love for him to start to sort of show everybody. But if, if he doesn't start, he'll definitely be brought in off, off the bench. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah, it, it will be. I think, I think that's, a, that's a reasonable thing to see. And maybe 20 minutes is enough. Uh, plus, you do want to... You do want to save him a little bit. I mean, he, he is thirty six. He is. He's older, and he takes punishment out there. He he gets kicked, and but he he likes that. It doesn't he bother does. him. I think that inspires him to play harder. Absolutely. Uh, LA Galaxy playing again four thirty Pacific time. Uh, Spectrum Sportsnet. Spectrum Deportes on July fourteenth, Saturday. Certainly, you want to catch that game. Watch the Galaxy take on the New England Revolution. We will have our game preview up at Corner of the Galaxy on Friday. So if it is Friday, you can head over to the website, and probably I will be there. Uh, it, it will probably be there in time. I'll have to write it tomorrow sometime, but we'll, we'll get it done. Um, so if, get- if, if he can find the time to do all these graphs, he'll get the preview done in time. Oh me. my. Such a, no, but such I'm, a I'm I'm impressed by the by the output you know that that you that you have. It's, yeah, but it's you're incredible. impressed by like you know computers and stuff, you know technology. So I don't know, I don't know. I didn't have to like do all that myself. I didn't have to draw the lines myself. The computer did it for me. All right, True. so. And now Larry's good. With, Larry is actually very well adjusted with technology, except he's not on Twitter. Nope, nope. He does stalk Twitter, however, and so he'll tell me about tweets stalk, that I make. Stalk is a that, that's a harsh monitor, word. Monitor Twitter. Monitor stalking. Monitor is much better. Stalk is is real. That's kind of nasty. It, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm not a stalker. Anyway, Galaxy uh, face off against New England, then they'll face off against the Philadelphia Union. LAFC on Thursday, July 26th. Uh, Sunday, July 29th, home to Orlando. Away to Colorado on August 4th, home to Minnesota. Home to Colorado on August 14th. Away to Seattle, home to LAFC August 24th. I'm just running down the set. Just to keep your uh, mind of what's going on here. Uh, away to Real Salt Lake. Away to TFC. Toronto have to go to away to Toronto. Will they be any better? in September than they are right now. Yes, they yeah, will. I don't know. They have not seen, we haven't seen that rocket rise from them. Like all of a sudden they figured oh, out they need to turn it off. Very gradual kind of, yeah. Home to Seattle, September 23rd. September 29th, home to Vancouver. Then finish out the season with two away games and a home game. Away to Sporting Kansas City. Oh, October 6th. They've got some 6th. tough matches. Yeah, they do. Uh, away to Minnesota in October. It could be like They had s- problems there snow. last year. Well, everybody got injured on that field. Yeah, don't uh, uh, well, remind Baggio what happened to him last year in Minnesota. I think uh, it says TFC Bank Stadium, so I still don't think that they're gonna they're gonna have. I think it's Allianz. It's is it the? It's not Allianz, but they're building a stadium in Minnesota. I've been watching it. I don't know if it's gonna be ready this year, but I, it might be ready towards the end of the season. So and the in the, the stadium last year would have had the uh, arguably the worst turf. 
Yo, surface of Yo, the Yo, Dom, Dom got hurt. Baggio Hasidic broke, broke his leg. His leg. Yeah. Um, I think there was another person who ended up getting getting uh, hurt in that game. Um, and then the final game, October 28th, against the Houston Dynamo. Uh, in Houston or out here? At home. At okay. home. Yeah, so that's Up Up Center. So that that's it. I mean, listen, I know that was a bunch of games, but whenever I list them off, it, does, it seems like the end of the season is a lot closer because it is. Uh, you know, 17 games is the midway point, which means that at, with 18 games, they have 16 games remaining. Um, the season's gone by fast, yeah, hasn't it? Yeah, it, it's, going, it's going really, really interesting to see uh, see how it all goes. Um, but yeah, it, it certainly is. The Galaxy have a tough stretch of games. It doesn't get any easier. There's some easy games in there, but it's not like... Find those easy games. Th- there was a Minnesota game at a home. A Minnesota game. Oh, that, that should be easy. Okay. Um, well, or, you, you'd think so. Technically, the Orlando game at home should be easy, but it's not because of all the travel. So, I mean, that's an easy game. Colorado away is technically an easy game. It's never easy, but because it's an easier the, game. The altitude. Right. But then they play them at home two weeks later. Yeah. That's That should be an easy game. Um, right now, Seattle away probably isn't the most difficult game in the world with the way Seattle's playing. Yeah, there aren't a bunch of easy games. You're right, and nor should there be. Uh, when the Galaxy, when you're not a very good team, there's not a ton of easy games. If you're a good team, Larry, there's lots of easy games. Lots of easy games. Um, but that's not the case. Atlanta United plays easy games almost every week. All right. Um, that's an impressive team. They are. They're very impressive. But that's how it goes. Um, Joseph Martinez. Wow, what a player. It'll be interesting to see how New York City ch- deals with their coaching change. New York Red Bulls deal with their coaching change in the middle of the season. So both of those and how that affects them down the way. It, it hasn't so far. I mean, you've sort of seen them be okay, but we're talking one game into this. So I was surprised to see Marsh... Uh Go? Yeah. He, he's, I was kind of surprised. He wants to go to Europe. I mean, and Is that's it? all feeder clubs, right? So, I mean, you kind of got to go. If the parent club says, we need you to be our coach, then you're going to be our coach, so... That's how it goes. Uh, we'll certainly see. All right. Uh, I think that's it for us. Uh, again, LA Galaxy play, play against New England Revolution. Uh, 4.30 p.m. Our, our time. Are you, are you going to be okay? You're gonna be, oh, you won't watch it because it's on Spectrum. You won't. You'll just let me tell you. I don't you get it. it. We yeah. have Dish, so I don't get it. Yeah, I'll you, have to watch the highlights. That's okay. They do such a wonderful job with the highlights. It's like you're there. <laughs> worst thing. I, we've already, I've been on my soapbox before this. but The worst highlights ever are from Major League Soccer. They are horrible. Um, they never tell the story. They never show the pertinent things. Well, the highlights, like, from the crew game. Brutal. Yeah. Oh, Brutal. It, it shows nothing. It doesn't show build-ups. It doesn't show any of the important parts. My favorite part is whenever they just show the penalty kick and they don't show the foul that led to the penalty kick. It's like, oh, okay, that's they great. They don't want to make the referee look bad. Yeah, what? Whatever. That's not That's not what they want to do. They just want to show... I just want to tell the story of the game. But every highlight is under four minutes. It's three minutes, 59, or four minutes exactly. Everyone, Everyone is under four minutes? So if you have a game like ter- like New England and Seattle, which had was 0-0, and each team had one shot on goal with one save, right? If you had that, you had four minutes of highlights they from that game. They found four minutes of highlights of and that game. And you had four minutes of highlights from the Galaxy game, of which there were four goals scored. It's exactly the same, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. That makes sense. And of course it does. That's MLS thinking. All right. Uh, let's see, Larry. Anything else? Uh, you good? No, sir. All right. If you're looking for Mr. Larry Morgan, you can find him here on Corner of the Galaxy. Cornerofthegalaxy.com is where you want to head. And uh, certainly check out all of his writing. His notebook is up, and he will, of course, continue to do his uh, his follows and his side pieces for us. And I'm even going to make him do a game recap against Orlando because I'm not going to be at the well, game. And I'm looking so. forward Woo-hoo! to that, too. I don't have to write a game recap. That's a good time for me. And so what, what, what day is that? That is the Orlando, Orlando game. game. Yeah, ju- July 29th. It's a Sunday. Day game? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's probably like Sounds a like six, a day game. It's probably like a 5.30, 6 okay. game, uh, if you call that a day game. Yeah, okay. true. All right, we'll see how Early start. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. All right. Uh, all right, so yeah, if you're looking for Larry, you can certainly find him uh, right here on cornerofthegalaxy.com, and uh, he's been doing a great job for us, and we're glad that he could fill and in. And if you, if you need to reach me, just pose a question to a, to a Josh, and I'll answer it. Yeah, yeah. Or, or I'll never pass it along to true. you. True. All right, if you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at JGuessman, J-G-U-E-S-M-A-N. And, of course, you can always get me at Galaxy Podcast on Twitter as well. Uh, head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com where you can find all of our shows, all of our uh, previews and recaps and everything else that's in between there. Uh, that's certainly what you can do. If you haven't joined us for our live show, then you're missing out. YouTube, Thursday night, 7 p.m. is when we usually kick off. So uh, please head on over to the website, cornerofthegalaxy.com forward slash live. Click on the live button there, and you can be part of it. Join the chat room with us as well. All right. For Mr. Larry Morgan, I'm Josh Kessman. You've been listening to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Everyone have a great weekend. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. 
And for all of your independent LA Galaxy news, discussion, and entertainment, including this podcast, head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com. Fans, thanks for listening. We ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.